Hey everyone, Tin Man here, and Dota Underlords has just released an awesome patch that includes the Ace tier heroes, their change to the five cost tier heroes, and Contraptions, a brand new set of items. There's a lot to cover here, let's hop right in. So Contraptions, the second thing I mentioned there, is they are placeable items. And they, as soon as you select them from the item phase, they appear on your board and you can move them and adjust them how you like. They behave like regular un units in the sense that you can drag them around and they affect gameplay and combat, but they do not count towards the unit cap. So you can feel free to have as many contraptions as you can fit onto the board. The other thing is ace tier heroes. Tier five units are now aces. Each is a capstone to its associated alliance. Each ace unit, in addition to its regular ability, has this ace effect that is only enabled when you have at least one tier of the associated alliance. So on its own, it doesn't do anything, but if you're playing the alliance with it and have activated that alliance, they'll get some cool new benefit. And we'll go over all of those in a moment. Whenever at least one level of that alliance is enabled, when an ace unit appears in the shop, the odds of it being an ace associated with that alliance is increased by 15%. So essentially what this means is, if your shop would naturally come up with a tier 5 unit so that the game will roll and say, okay, you have a 1% chance to get a tier 5 unit, and we got that 1% chance, now it's going to look at your board and say, okay, you've got this alliance active and that alliance active, we're going to preferentially give you aces for those alliances. So you'll be less likely to get ones that you can't use and more likely to use ones that you can. Uh, you don't really notice this, it'll just kind of happen passively. But that's a good kind of quality of life thing. General improvements, there's the typical improvements about some UI updates um, and, and controlling, nothing too interesting there. Um, a couple of things that are uh, I, th I think are good improvements are you can now see the next level odds of finding a particular hero. Uh, whenever you are thinking about leveling up, you know, oh, is this going to increase my odds of finding the two cost or the three cost or, you know, however that's going to impact your strategy. Unit status panel now shows correct armor values during combat. So this was not live updating, for example, when you had the warrior buff or Slarder uh, targeted somebody with his ultimate or you had Blightstone or any kind of armor adjustment things. That was not live updating during combat. So now you, you will get that update and that's always, always good for clarity purposes. Uh, gameplay, they improved AI pathing and I haven't really extensively tested this obviously just yet, but I'm really hopeful that some of the AI issues where like an assassin would jump in, but your unit would just walk past them to get to the front line instead of like retargeting to the assassin who just jumped in. Uh, hopefully that improves and that'll give a little bit more, uh, a little bit more importance to the, some of the counterplay and positioning. Hero changes. So before there's most of these changes are going to be talking about the ace effects, but there are a couple non ace changes. So Bloodseeker, our favorite one cost assassin. Uh, is a human assassin, but is now human dead eye assassin. And honestly, I'm a little surprised that it took them this long to make him a dead eye. Uh, his ability and his kind of his whole theme is like preying on the weak and trying to get those kills, trying to finish people off to get that extra heal. And making him a dead eye, where the dead eye alliance basically says that they'll always target the lowest health unit, seems like a really obvious change. And I'm Quite frankly, surprised it took them this long. I still don't think Bloodseeker is a great unit. He's still kind of this early game piece where you play him at one or play him at two stars in the early game and then try to transition away. And I don't think this really changes it, but it's a nice little buff to that case. Another buff to another one cost assassin is Bounty Hunter. His attack damage was increased pretty modestly. Uh, it used to be 47 at level one, and now it's up to 65. And then at two star, which is most likely where you're going to be playing him, it went from 95 up to 130. That is rather substantial and you should definitely be higher putting higher priority on but bounty hunter in the early game now because this is a this is a lot of attack damage and so he's going to be a, a pretty big force in the early game. Uh, the other non ace effect change was on ogre magi, kind of skipping around here, but on ogre magi his bloodlust now preferentially targets himself first and then targets allies uh, with preference towards the closest hero to himself. And I honestly think this is a nerf to Ogre Magi. Uh, the Bloodlust on himself is, is more powerful. So in that sense, it's a little stronger if you're planning on using Ogre Magi as, you know, as himself to be, a, to be a beater. But if you're trying to use Ogre Magi to enable the Bloodbound synergy and have him die quickly and maybe cast Bloodlust on somebody more useful, he's not gonna cast on somebody more useful. He's gonna cast on himself. And if you're using him for a sacrifice, 
he's just going to die with the Bloodlust on himself. It also makes him harder because he targets based on distance. He's going to target the close ones. And if you've got a range dude in the back like Arc Warden, he's like never going to target the Arc Warden. So a little bit weaker on Ogre Magi. All right, so on to the aces. Disruptor. Disruptor has changed from tier 4 up to ace. And he has lost his shaman tag. He is now just Brawny Warlock, which is what he was uh, for... A, or actually, he's changed. He used to be Brawny Shaman, and then he became Brawny Shaman Warlock, and now he's just Brawny Warlock. His health has been buffed uh, by 200 at every level, except for level 3, but you're never going to get him to 3 star. And his damage has slightly increased. But the ace effect is the important part. He is the ace for the Warlock Alliance. So if you have the Warlock Alliance active, he'll do some benefit. And he says your Warlock Alliance effect is now applied to two units in addition to the Warlock rather than just one. So when a Warlock casts a spell, the healing will now go to two other units plus Disruptor himself. So it's pretty. that's a pretty powerful effect and, and kind of thematic with the way the Warlocks work. Enigma. He is now an ace for the Shaman Alliance. The Shaman Alliance, which um, has been changed ever so slightly, now says it extends the effect of the Shaman Alliance to your entire army. Now, we'll get to it a little bit later, but the Shaman Alliance now just requires two Shamans, and it triggers the Polymorph effect if they're attacked 10% of the time rather than 17%. But I think this is actually really powerful. This Shaman Alliance is like... It's really strong. Being able to Polymorph an opponent's unit for four seconds when they attack you... Even if it's only 1 out of 10 attacks, you know, if, if your entire opponent's army attacks you once, you know, it takes 1 second, all 10 of their units attack you once, one of them is going to get transformed. Then the next wave attack, another one gets transformed. And the next wave attack, another one gets transformed. Like, that's, that's pretty impactful. And I think Enigma is going to rise in priority quite a bit, and the Shaman Alliance is definitely going to be something you're looking to complete. Um, especially because Arc Warden, a notorious offender that i was pretty sure was going to get nerfed this patch did not get touched so look for enigma plus arc warden coming to a game near you gyrocopter he is now an ace for the dead eye alliance which now includes bloodseeker and it says dead eye dead eye units gain true strike units with true strike cannot miss um that's relevant against elusives uh that's it Hmm, not very impactful. Not very interested in that. Lich is the ace for the Mage Alliance. Your army's mana generation from attacks is increased by 10% per Mage Alliance level. And so this is at most, what, a 20% increase if you're running six mages or a 10%? I'd say that's pretty small. I mean, if you're normally gaining 20 mana per auto attack, you're now gaining 22 like, maybe you get a spell off not even an auto attack quicker? I I don't know. I feel like this is this number is very low. And I, I don't think this is super impactful. Medusa, ace for the scaled alliance. Not hunter for some reason. Um, attack range has been reduced. Her attack range is now smaller, and as has her stone gaze radiance. So this is actually a reasonable nerf to Medusa. Her ace effect, though grants scaled units retaliate. When a unit with retaliate is attacked, they apply a 25 damage per second per alliance level debuff to the attacker. So if you have four uh, scaled units, it'll deal 50 damage per second back to the attacker, or just 25 if you only have two scaled. I remember when retaliate, the global item was in the meta, and it kind of gave this ability as a global item, although it did 80 damage at the time. It was really powerful at 80 damage. Um, even if you only get 50 damage out of this, Essentially, you can just like throw a Tidehunter or Slarder just like up in front and just have them tank, have everybody on the opponent's team hit them, and then suddenly you're dealing hundreds of damage to the whole entire team right at the start. So I think that's a pretty powerful effect, but do note that Medusa herself has been nerfed to kind of compensate for that. It's hard to tell exactly where this is going to fall in the meta, because it's very rare to get four scaled anyway, um, but uh, I think this is one to keep an eye on. Ogre Magi, we discussed that earlier. And Techies is now the ace for the Inventor Alliance. Uh, inventors, whenever an enemy dies as a result of the unstable reactor explosion, they then explode again as if they had unstable reactor, presumably hitting the enemy again, and potentially setting off a chain reaction. <laughs> it's pretty thematic uh, and very, very in tune with what Techies is all about, making more explosions. 
Uh, that being said, I don't think this is gonna trigger all that often. Um, at least, I don't. I don't think it'll trigger very often. It seems like they. Some people sometimes die on stable reactor, um, but not as often as just like your regular abilities and attacks. I'd be very happy to be proven wrong because this sounds like really fun if it works. You just watch your entire opponent's board explode. Um, Troll Warlord is now the ace for the Troll Alliance, and his attack rate has been nerfed really substantially from one attack per second up to 1.3 attacks per second. That is a rather substantial nerf, and I think that makes Troll Warlord kind of bad. And his ace effect now gives your units mini bash when attacking your team is a 5% chance per troll alliance level of stunning the target for 0.25 seconds. First off, this is a pretty low percent chance. Even if you get up to four trolls, it's only a 10% chance per attack. And it's a really small stun. A quarter of a second? I don't think this is that great. And I think the nerf to troll, the attack, the massive attack speed slow, uh, is going to make this not very appealing. Okay, um, on the whole, before we get to the item changes in the barricade, which was flashing on our screen for a while, sorry if that was distracting, um, the whole ace system, I'm not thrilled with. There's some cool ideas here, right? Making units um, capstone, capstone is a word, um, kind of like this, this crowning achievement that, hey, I'm doing this alliance, and now I got, I got the pinnacle of this alliance and I get some cool effect. That's, that's cool, that's, that's thematic, that's fun. But the fact that they only did it for the existing tier five heroes and they just picked the alliances that they already were other than add Warlock or add Disruptor in, like kind of makes it feel incomplete, right? Like where's the warrior capstone? Where's the hunter? Where's the, you know, where's the elusive? Where's the, all the other ones? Like there's some of the major alliances like mage, which are kind of the, the multi-tier build around type of alliances. Uh, but then there's also like Deadeye. And it's like, what does this do? <laughs> it affects like two units. Uh, I, I don't know, it, it seems it seems incomplete. I like the concept, but I feel like this is a concept that is tacked on to existing units and existing tiers and existing alliances and not kind of built from the ground up. I, I would like to see, I know this is still a work in progress, and I, I hope that when they make the big one patch, when they introduce the Underlords and, and kind of revamp some of the other systems that they've been teasing for a couple of weeks now, I hope they either add more to this system or kind of rework all of the units to make this system make sense. If, if that make if that if I'm if I'm saying it right, uh, because right now it's like it's just the alliance of the units that are already there it's not there's no real clear cut i'd like to see it you know at least for all of the alliances that have multi-tiers such as mage warrior hunter or all the ones that require three of a kind once again like mage warrior hunter uh or just the ones that are one-off kind of kind of these side alliances things like shaman and dead eye uh or or inventor um i'd like to see them get a bit more direction on this i like the idea Execution leaves a little bit to be desired. Okay, on to the items, and these are really cool. This is my favorite part of this update. The item changes. They've introduced um, a handful of these consumable or contraption items, not consumable. And when you pick them from the item shop, just like any other tier two item, the barricade will appear on your board. You get two placeable barricades, and they block enemies from walking through them and you from walking through them. And they also blocked ranged attacks. And I'm gonna actually hop into a custom game here and show you how all of these work in practice. Um, it says they have 400 health and 20 armor. And as of right now, there seems to be no way to destroy them because they're also immune to spells. It seems like opponents cannot attack these things. I think the idea is that melee are supposed to be able to attack them. Um, but that does not seem to be the case as of this exact moment. If this gets updated, well, you know, you'll see that in game. But as of right now, these are not attackable, the barricades. Um, target buddy. Uh, this is like the cutest thing in the patch, <laughs> this little Tidehunter punching bag. Um, it's a tier two contraption. It has 1000 health and 10 armor, and it taunts enemies on a 10 second cooldown. So it taunts everybody nearby, forces them to attack it, and can equip items. 
And so that's important if you want to add defensive items or blade mail, for instance. You can put a blade mail on this guy so he reflects some damage. Um, but he also has 10 armor and 1,000 health, which makes him tankier than even like a one-star pudge. So you can basically just add like this tank to your team early on and uh, also has some pretty interesting uses later in the game to kind of distract opponents key carries for a few seconds and and play around with it it's pretty cool he can also equip uh, some other items which i'll show you later on uh, unfortunately attack damage items do nothing on him so he can't ever attack healing ward tier 3 contraption has 200 health and it heals friendly units within one cell for 20 hp per second this is a cool concept but as of this exact moment, this is really weak. Really, really weak. 20 healing per second is not a lot. It is very, like, that is, that is very little. Even if you're just running all one-star units, like, yeah, it probably wins you fights as a one, uh, when you're talking about one-star units. But as a tier three item, you're not talking about one-star units anymore. You're talking about, um, you're talking about two-star two units and starting to like creep into three-star territory. So, like, just imagine, compare this to, say, like, Sacred Relic, right? Sacred Relic deals 60 attack damage. And if you put it on a unit who has one attack per second, Wind Ranger, Bounty Hunter, anything, any of the Hunters have one attack per second, you're dealing 60 DPS, 60 bonus DPS. Healing Ward, in order to match that healing, you need to have three guys standing right next to it. Remember, this thing doesn't move. And that's healing that's spread out, and it's not single target healing. And, like, that just seems so narrow and so not realistic to have that happen all the time so i don't really like healing ward all that much um i i think it seems pretty weak at the current moment i think it will need to be buffed because its healing is very low tombstone tombstone is a tier four contraption so this competes with big hitters like daedalus and moonshard it has 2000 health and 20 armor and this thing is tanky and it says allies and enemy heroes spawn zombies when they die within two cells of the tombstone. Now these zombies are kind of weak. They're kind of like the nature's prophet treants in terms of health and damage output, but they are still warm bodies uh, or cold bodies. Uh, they're bodies nonetheless, and they can be buffed by summoning stone and they can kind of distract the enemy and tombstone itself can distract the enemy as well. They will, enemies will attempt to attack it. Uh, it doesn't taunt, but you can still put it in a conspicuous spot and have opponents attack it. So let's, um, before we go on to the rest of this, actually, no, let's let's finish up the rest of this, and then I'll go in and show how all of those work. Um, alliance changes. There's just a couple more changes here. Um, the alliance changes. Shaman unit, I kind of said that earlier, and now requires two heroes to activate down from three, and it is a 10% chance of turning them into a chicken instead of 17%. Um, this is like a buff to Arc Warden, because he's like the best shaman in the game, and he's the best unit in the game, and I don't like that because Arc Warden was already too good. I was fully expecting an Arc Warden nerf this patch, and it only seems like he's gotten buffed. Now you really just want to grab the Shaman bonus with Arc Warden plus Enigma, put them both in. Your entire board has a 10% chance, not just your Shaman, all of your units because of the capstone effect. And then I feel like it just gets silly. I feel like that's going to be a meta-defining composition right now, is Arc Warden plus Enigma plus six other units. I don't care what they are. That seems really strong. Assassin. Assassin bonus. Um, actually, all of these will be grouped together. Assassin, Elusive, and Warrior can all be kind of grouped together as one. And all of them were the previous 3, 6, 9 alliance. And now they're just 3 and 6. They've removed the 9 unit tier. They've gotten slightly buffed to compensate. At uh, 3 heroes for assassins, the crit chance is up slightly from 10% to 15. And then at six it's up from 20 to 25 um but of course now you can never get nine assassins and get that pocket sand effect elusives also the evasion is up from 20 percent to 25 and 45 to 50 but you can no longer get the nine elusives as well as the nine elusive buff on your 10th unit and then warriors of course they no longer have nine warriors although that was pretty rare anyway and six warriors has now been buffed rather substantially from 15 armor up to 20 armor so i think the big winner here is six warrior builds because they got directly buffed and i think six warrior builds are now quite strong and they were always kind of like on the fringes of the meta anyway we'll see a lot of warriors coming up uh here soon uh but i think the big losers are uh the elusives and assassins you no longer get to play those cool 
nine unit compositions and get the pocket sand effect from assassins or the extra evasion from elusive and i kind of like this from a design perspective from like a from like a, a fun perspective i'll say because a lot of the fun in my opinion of these auto chess style games is building a, a different composition every game you know taking what the game gives you and trying to adapt and trying to build pieces together and making them work whereas when you have these nine nine alliances the assassins and elusive in particular because there was only nine assassins and nine elusives it took away a lot of that decision making you say i'm gonna go for nine assassins and suddenly you don't need to think about what units to pick anymore you just pick an assassin and that's it you pick an if, if it's an elusive you pick it you play it done no decision making there's no option of which ones do i pick which ones do i not pick how do i find combos between them no it's just there's nine of them you're gonna play all nine that was kind of boring so as much as i kind of liked those builds because they were powerful and and um and like felt cool when you got them all completed the gameplay was like pretty brain dead you just picked all the elusives or picked all the assassins and just played them no no decisions there so kind of glad to see that go uh we'll see how this all plays out uh, i don't know the exact power level because these buffs are a little bit hard to interpret right now i mean there's just slight buffs but we'll see how that plays out all right uh last thing before we get to show some, how the, some of the items work uh, the unit tier odds by level have been readjusted again and basically the big takeaway here is that there's now the one percent chance for these aces at level eight three percent at level nine and six percent at level ten so those of you who remember before they started messing around with these unit odds this is going back to the old unit odds at least in terms of ace tier the tier four units are untouched so they're still higher than they were a long time ago and then a little bit lower odds of the tier one and tier two units to kind of they basically stole percentage from the tier one and two and three and added it to the ace tier so i'm not a huge fan of putting this one percent back in and i'm gonna make an entire video on my thoughts on ace tier in particular and how like legendary units or these tier five capstones should be handled and designed in these games and i'm I, i'll just preview that a little bit and say i'm not a huge fan of the way that worked um or the way they've done it here not quite my favorite so uh with that in mind let's hop into dota underlords i've got game up here let's turn on the sound and so in order to get into a custom game if you go up into the settings this is a cool little trick uh and click on the build version it doesn't look like a button but if you click on it or actually if you're here in game and you click on build version you get to this menu and then you want to check this box this is dac developer mode and then go back and click play and just hop into a bot game and you'll have a cool little menu to kind of tinker around with this open debug menu actually my face is in the way let me hop my face to the other side um there we go so now you can see these open debug menu and uh, you just pick any unit. I mean, you still play the game regularly against bots, but then you can pick any item in the game and just give it to yourself. So let's pick barricades here. Just select it, click give item, and bam, you got some barricades to play with. So just like a unit, you can pick these, you can drag them around. You cannot move them to your bench. They must stay on the board somewhere. And when you get them, the the game plays, um, or this is without the barricades. Let's proceed to combat and then round two we get to play with the barricades so let's see how this plays out against the creeps you got the ogre magi you see they um the ranged units walk up but then they actually are attacking through the barricades that's interesting i thought it was supposed to block ranged attacks but ogre magi you see has to walk around it because he can't walk through it and he just ma barely manages to win that uh, but if you happen to say box your ogre magi in a corner box your melee unit in a corner with your barricades let's go to round three here and see what happens they'll still be able to attack diagonally but ogre magi himself kind of just stands there because he can't get out you can't move diagonally through the barricades the range attackers still attack through and then they just kind of form a neat orderly queue for ogre to to bash their skulls in until he loses so let's see what else we can play around with we've got the um yeah, pick up whatever items 
uh, healing ward. So let's see how this works. So this is the 20 healing per second ward. You can see this, it has a little bit of an outline of where it's gonna heal. Let's give ourselves um, a few more units to play around with. So we can kind of see how this works. Let's move up to the front line here and then the next round is gonna be against the human bot and we'll see how this plays out. We can watch the healing meter off on the right. Obviously the barricades are gonna deal no damage. They show up in this menu for some reason. But if we look at healing done, we can see the healing ward is healing the Abaddons pretty well. I mean, it heals for about 360 over the course of this fight, which is kind of substantial when you're talking about like, that's half of an Abaddon's health pool. But when you're talking about two star units, that's, that's pretty pitiful comparatively. So it's not great. Um, I actually kind of wonder, I want to test this out myself. What happens if you put the healing ward up front and have nobody next to it? Do your opponents attack it? I think they should, or they'll just walk around it. Yeah, they do attack the healing ward and goes down pretty quick. And then obviously you lose the healing. Alright, the next item we want to look at is um, target buddy. So we'll get a target buddy here, we'll go back to setup, and we can play around with target buddy. So if we put him out here, actually does healing ward heal the target buddy? Let's find out. Um, so let's take a watch. So target buddy is going to immediately taunt everybody right next to him. Does this little taunt animation, does a little dance, and uh, it looks like he is getting heal. He is not getting healed up by the healing ward. Okay, so the healing ward does not heal the target buddy, but it heals your units. Good to know. Target buddy can hold items though. So if you wanted to hold an item like say blade mail, he can do that, and he can reflect some damage. He can also hold blink dagger. This is pretty cool. Um, let's go back to setup here and uh, give him the Blink Dagger. So if you wanna give him a Blink Dagger, let's take a watch how that works out. He's gonna taunt and then he's gonna blink. So he initially casts the taunt and then he blinks to the back and everyone kind of turns around to your army. So that's pretty cool. It's a pretty cool effect. Uh, I don't know if that's actually gonna be like a good use of Blink Dagger, but y you can. You can put all kinds of items on him, although offensive items don't seem to do anything because he can't attack. He has a zero attack speed. But Blade Mail is probably an okay option if you don't have somebody better, as is Blink Dagger for something cool. Or plus health items like Vitality Booster or something along those lines. And the last item we wanted to test out was Tombstone. That was the last big one. And so this is a, a much bigger version of, of Target Buddy. Uh, you can see there's like this two square radius around him that's like defiled ground. And then if... Um, if units, if opposing units get into it, let's let's kind of add uh, some big hitters here so we can kill off opposing units real quick. And then let's go to combat. And here in round eight, so our unit should hopefully kill off this timber saw pretty quick, and then we can see the ghoul pop out of the ground. It also can take damage, like opponents can attack it. You see this timber saw is attacking, and then see here we got a ghoul or a zombie. He's got 300 health, 40 damage. 8 point, or 0.83 attack speed and 33 DPS. That's pretty low, 5 armor. Like, this is like a treant spawn, like, not that impactful. But the Tombstone himself is pretty powerful, and of course that gets buffed by Summoning Stone, and it's really just a body that can go out and, and uh, do some stuff on the board. So, I think that just about covers it on all of the things that happen in this new patch. There is a lot to change, and I... I have no idea the optimal way of playing with barricades, although they seem really cool, or playing with like Tombstone and Target Buddies. These these seem really like cool effects that I'm curious to see how they work out in practice, as well as the Ace effects and um, Healing Ward's going to need a buff before I'm interested in playing with it. But there we have it. Uh, this new patch is pretty cool. I'm very excited to get into it, and I hope you are too. Let me know what you think in the comments, and thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.